Um, hello, everyone, to, today, to today's uh, webinar. Today we are um, taking a further look into um, the preoperative planning of shoulder prosthesis um, with the Medicat 3D shoulder software and also um, take a look at the intraoperative realization of this 3D planning that um, we previously planned with our Medicat modules. So today uh, I'm here with Achilles Bociades, uh, Dr. Bociades, who practices in the 401st Military Hospital in Athens and in the Bioclinic for Advanced Shoulder Services in Athens in Greece, um, and who also is quite um, already published quite a lot of uh, studies and papers regarding this topic will uh, support us today a little bit and um, give us a little bit more detailed introduction into how he is using the Medicat 3D shoulder planning um, for his surgeries in order to get the best outcome out of um, his surgeries. And in the second part, we'll also give you a short introduction into how um, he manages to bring these uh, preoperatively planned um, plannings into the surgery room um, with the newest innovation Medicat will soon to be releasing um, based on a mixed reality technology. So uh, before I'm heading over to you, Achilles, um, I just want to uh, give you a short introduction. First of all of me, I'm David Würdinger. Um, I'm in the product management here at uh, Medicat, uh, responsible for the area of new technologies. And, um, and specifically, I want to give you a detailed, um, or a, let's say more a brief introduction into our 3D planning software, especially for those of you who might not have worked too um, much with the 3D shoulder planning so that you get just get a little bit of an overview of how the software is um, built up of uh, the functions and the um, use cases that you can get out of the software. So I'm just quickly switching over to our 3D planning software. All right, so now you should be able to see my screen and you should be able to see the um, 3D shoulder software that I just opened. Um, so what you can basically see here right now is a already previously made um, 3D shoulder planning along with all the implants we planned with the measurements and basically ready to go. So um, when it comes to the 3D shoulder planning, what um, specifically is um, really uh, good about this software, what really makes out the most um, use cases is that first of all, you have the possibility to automatically detect all of the landmarks um, that you need for measurements. For example, if it comes to the glenoid um, plane, to the um, scapular plane, you can um, all these, um, all these landmarks that you need in order to get the true measurements, the software can automatically recognize, automatically set. You only have to take a quick view um, to check them, check whether they are really um, set correctly, and that's basically already it. Um, the next step, the software is also capable of um, segmenting the humerus so that you can um, hide the humerus, for example, in order for you to get an even better um, look at the glenoid itself at the placement of the k wire and how you, the implants are placed so that's another function that just should give you a even better understanding of how you planned your surgery for you to answer questions like okay did i chose the right size for the glenoid component here is it um, maybe too big for this glenoid or is it just right um, do I have enough bone stock or are there maybe any perforations here? Um, if I set my, you can see here, for example, it comes out a little bit um, for my implant. So that's just something that the 3D planning can only provide you compared to 2D pl plannings where you just don't have that detailed uh, overview. 
And also the implants, as you can see, we have placed uh, already our implants here. If I go to the implant list, um, another really nice feature is that they are actually um, set automatically based on the Friedman's line, which is automatically detected by our software, by the landmarks. So also that's something you only have to um, choose the implants you want. You can basically choose between a lot of different implant manufacturers. So we basically have one of the biggest implant manufacturer databases in the 3D market here, as you can see. And um, then the software automatically sets the implants. You only have to maybe adjust them a little bit, uh, depending on how you plan to um, do the surgery. And that's basically already it. All right. So that was the first step. But now, of course, you are at a point where you say, OK, you planned your 3D, um, you planned your shoulder surgery with the 3D software with the top notch technology in this area. That's really nice, but how can you get this 3D um, planning into the surgery room? And that's, of course, you used the newest technology for planning. You don't want to go back 20 years in uh, planning and print out the whole. Um, planning you made, stick it with some tape into the surgery room, because of course that would um, just um, make you lose all the advantages you would have from your 3D planning. And for this step, something Achilles will also um, show you a little bit later on, we decided to go the next step and that's exporting this 3D along with, a, uh, with additional information like your measurements, like planning reports into the OR with a mixed reality um, solution. And for that, I'm just quickly switching back to my presentation. So as you can see, that is our solution of how we want to get into the OR, how we want you to um, help you to get all the advantages you have from 3D planning also in the surgery room. Um, that's just a little sneak peek here ab about how this might look. Um, you see um, it's based on a mixed reality device on the Microsoft HoloLens, but how exactly that then will look in the surgery or in practical usage is something that Achilles will, um, or Dr. Potsiadis will show you uh, later on. So um, right now I would like to head over to you, um, Dr. Potsiadis, so that you can um, show how you actually um, make use of this 3D planning and also the mixed reality solution later on. So thank you, David, uh, for the introduction and thank you, David, uh, for the other help uh, during this period. And uh, let's go on. So today we're going to speak a little bit more about reverse shoulder arthroplasty and uh, that uh, is gaining uh, is gaining more and more in our daily practice. And we are, everybody knows the Gramont design and the Gramont design has recruited the fibers from the delta it is in order to make abduction, especially forward flexion. So it mainly restores forward flexion and gives very, very good results. But sometimes the rotation was always a problem in the past. However, nowadays we have new designs and we can have very good results even in rotation with the reverse shoulder arthroplasty. But sometimes we have very poor results, even in the forward flexion. And sometimes are very, very fair our results, forward flexion and even the rotations. So which, which are another problem of the reverse shoulder arthroplasty, another problem is the notching. It's about 88% in about a period of 12 years post-operatively, and this is published by Gilles Valls. And also the Gramont design causes lengthening with branchial plexus problems. It also causes cosmetic problems, and sometimes you have to sacrifice the greater tuberosity bone stock. And if you lengthen a lot, you have a lot of problems and, and uh, a pain, persistent pain to the patient. So for these reasons, we have new lateralized designs. And the potential benefits is that the effects of the new lateralized designs, either from the, from the, from the glenoid or the, from the humerus stem, can affect our final result. 
And we now, now in, in the market, we have a lot of a lot of reverse photograph of plastic with different lateralization. So we have different results with different different reverse solder after plastics, and we don't know what is happening. So nowadays, the preoperative mass, the the, the preoperative mass condition, what how, what is the preoperative mass condition? What is the preoperative range of motion? What is the bone deformity? How we can correct this deformity? Which is the final reverse solder after plastic position? Which is the final muscle balance? And we have to avoid muscle and nerve overstretching. So nowadays, with too many too many materials, the planning seems to be mandatory to avoid any bone impingement and to correct the deformities. However, what is the best position of the reverse solder after plastic? And can we predict it? And can with a, a, a preoperative planning software help us? So we have in the market different different preoperative planning softwares, but all these softwares. Are for uh, for uh, for its reverse solder for plastic for its company. So right now with um, with the Medicat, I will show you this software seems to change the understanding of the patient's anatomy and mainly from the glenoid side. And all the publications show us that the the preoperative the planning software changed the way that the surgeon is thinking and also help the young surgeons to operate it better and to, to understand the anatomy and the pathology. So I'm using the Medicat about two years right now, and it has available all the possible and, and a lot of possible reverse solder after plastic on the market. So if you don't like something or it doesn't fit to your pathology or you have to change something, I will show you in my next videos how you can take the advantage, profit from these advantages of this software. So which are the main problems in the reverse solder after plastic? And well, let's start with the bone deformities. And the glenoid is the main problem. We have the anteroposterior deformity in the transverse plane and also the superior inferior deformity in the coronal plane. So this is the, the, the mainly we have excessive retrovation and excessive posterior erosion. And everybody knows the classification from the zeal valves. So, attention to the malposition of the axial plane. So if you want to put it right, or you put it, you don't put it right, you, you follow the deformity, or you medialize a lot, or you have to correct this deformity putting either a metal or even a bony opening and posteriorly to the, to the glenoid. And this is probably the ideal position. However, we have to think about when we put a, glino, uh, a base plate, that the glenoid version is not the same at all the levels of the glenoid. So we have to think about the glenoid version at the lowest 25 millimeters, which is the diameter of the most of the companies for a reverse solder of the plastic for the base plate in order to correct these deformities. So by using, for, for example, the Medicat, you see I can, I can uh, choose my level of, uh, of uh, the retroversion to measure my retroversion. And I measure it where I want to put my base plate. So in this case, for example, it's, it's, it's not, it, it's easy. However, in some cases, like this, I go in fairly and I can measure about 20 degrees of retroversion. And I will solve this case in the next slides. In the coronal plane, in cases we have rotator cuff arthropathy and mainly we have superior humeral head migration, we have superior erosion and uh, we know the Favars classification. So the superior erosion seems to be the most important factor in order to avoid notching over the time. So the glenoid inclination is mainly measured usually the beta angle. And in this case, using the software, we have already measured uh, the retroversion and we can measure also the superior inclination. However, which is the best position of a, of a base plate for a reverse solder after plastic. Everybody knows that we have to put it on the lower part, on the lower third of the glenoid, and also to put 10 degrees of inferior tilt. 
So the superior, which is the superior inclination, and tilt, which is the, the, the reverse shoulder of the plastic inferior tilt. We know that the inclination is measured with a beta angle, and this is a global inclination of 26 degrees. However, the base plate is put at the lower head, and Pascal Boileau says that we have an inferior inclination, and this is called the RSA angle. He introduced this angle, and we have to measure it at the lower, at the lowest 25 millimeters that corresponds to the base plate of the reverse shoulder of the plastic. So in order to avoid to put it to put it excessively with a superior inclination, but to correct this or to put it with an inferior tilt. <clears throat> so this we have we had a case with a with a 21 degrees of a superior inclination of the lower third, and we have to correct it by using or bony offset posteriorly or a metal augment. So by using the software of Medicat, we can also do this thing. We measure the, the millimeters. So we go to the, to the 26, 27 millimeters. And at this level, we can also measure the RSA angle, which is the, the inclination of the, of the inferior part. And we see right now, it was seven degrees, but right now is 15 degrees. So we have to correct it. And if we, we measure the distance from the, from the glenoid to the, to, to, to the ankle, to the one part of the ankle, we can measure seven millimeters. So probably it's the, it's the offset of the bi RSA of the metal augment posteriorly that we have to choose over seven millimeters bi RSA or 70 millimeters of metal augment posteriorly to the, to the base plate. Let's go further and put our put our implant. In this case, we use uh, an implant without any uh, without, uh, metal of posteriorly. We can choose its, its position in order to correct it. At the right side, we can see that uh, we can see the correction and the, the angles that were correcting during the position of the, of the, of the implant. And we see that superiorly it has a little bit defect. So probably we have to fill this with a, with a small bony part. So with the young part in Grenoble before four years, we thought that we have at the right side, a Gramont prosthesis and to the left side, we have a new one prosthesis with a bio RSA that corrects the deformities. And we expected to have better results with the left side with a new prosthesis and not with the right side. However, we had the opposite. And why this happened? So before four years, we introduced two angles, the, the LSA and the DSA, the lateralization, the distalization shoulder angles, that we can measure it in a similar post-operative radiographs. We have seen that these two angles are very, they, they have very high intra and inter observer reliability. And that these angles are independent from any magnification, they're independent from any patient size, they're comparable, and they're highly correlated with the functional outcome. So, can we predict the best implant type or the best position of, the, of our reverse shoulder of the plastic? And we found that when, when we have a DSA between 40 and 60 degrees and an LSA between 75 and 95 degrees, we have our best result. So let's go on with our planning and let's go on to our humerus. We have put our, our, our base plate, we have put our glenosphere, and right now using the software, we can uh, choose uh, the, the osteotomy. I am preferring to, to the anatomy, to respect the anatomy of the patient. Now I prefer, I perform my osteotomy. I can hide my glenoid. I can choose my implant and also choose the position of my implant. We can reposition our, uh, our, our arthroplasty, and this is our final image that we can have. So 
However, right now, this is the best position. So we're using the software. I can measure also in my software, both the DSA and also the LSA angle. For in this case, I had 45 degrees of a DSA, of a distalization shoulder angle. And also probably And also the distance that we have the distalization of all the prosthesis is about 31 millimeters, about three centimeters. And also the distal the, the, the distalization, the lateralization shoulder ankle is about oh, sorry. is about 80, 85 degrees. So it is in the rates that in our publication said that we have the best position of our implant. So can we achieve the desired LSA, DSA, and RSA and deformity correction intraoperatively? So we, had, we have made all our pre-operative planning. We spent time, we, we measured the several ankles, the position of our, of our implants, and now we can study the deformity of uh, the anatomy. We can, we can play a lot of in our office before the operating theater. And also before the operation, we can also see our planning, which is the, which is the, the position of our RSA. We can give uh, the HoloLens to our residents. To, to our fellows to wear it and to see the deformity, to understand what are going, we're going to do, or probably to give them a second HoloLens and uh, give them the opportunity to see uh, the deformity and what the surgeon is doing during the operation. I think it's, uh, this is very, very educative for young surgeons or for young fellows that they're trying to understand the concept of uh, reversal graphoplasty. So interoperately, in this case, this is the put of the first guide wire and we have the, 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 the CT scan of the patient in a hologram. This is the bio RSA that we have measured. It is a six millimeter. We can project our bio RSA to the hologram. This is very, very useful sometimes. And then this is the final position of our base plate. And you can have in a, in a reality world also the images in the 3D plane in, and also in the two planes, in the, in the transverse in the, yeah, and also in the axial plane. So this is the same case. We have plant. The final LSA is 88, and we have plant preoperatively 86, 85.9. And the DSA postoperatively is 46, and we have plant 45.5. And if we see the patient six weeks post-operatively, you see that the patient, I think the balance of the muscle balance is, is very, very good. And you can see the forward elevation and also the external rotation. <clears throat> So let's plan also a second case. We have a 62 years old primary osteoarthritis, a female patient with uh, five years of excessive pain. Her preoperative forward flexion was 80 degrees. The external rotation was zero degrees. The internal rotation, it was until the sacroiliac joint. The assay score was 12, the SST one, and the constant score 25. And we, if you see the MRI, we see the osteoarthritis partial probably lesion of the rotator cuff, but faulty infiltration of stage three or four of uh, the supraspinatus. And if we see the CT scan in a 3D, in the 3D MPR, we see that we have a, an erosion, stereo erosion of the glenoid. So let's go to the Medicat. And uh, we see that uh, we have a retroversion of 
approximately 20 around degrees. So in this patient with a fatty filtration and also with a excessive posterior erosion, I prefer to do a reverse shoulder aftoplasty. We can see it in a 3D manner, the, the excessive posterior wear of, of, uh, of our glenoid. And also the, the inclination actually was about say, 80, 80 degrees. It was, it was not so excessive. Also the RSA ankle was the same. We didn't have any excessive superior inclination of the lower part of, uh, of, our, glen of our glenoid, so 80 degrees. If we, if we plan a little bit and we measure the distance for, for the retroversion, we see that we have probably to use an 80 millimeter or seven millimeter bio RSA or a metal posterior augment to correct this deformity. And uh, let's go to our available implants. We see that in order to correct the deformity, we have here a gap and we have to fill it with a, with a, with a bone and uh, uh, with a half wedge bone that uh, the, the, the distance posterior has to be seven, about seven millimeters. So, but using the, using the Medicat, even if you don't have available any other implants, you can use several other companies and to see what is fit better. So here we use the, the implant of another company that is available with a, with a posterior uh, metal augment in order to correct this deformity. And uh, you see, we, we choose our position and at the right side, you can see right now that the post operatively the version angle is about uh, for deformity. Afterwards, we go to our humerus and uh, we select the preferred osteotomy level. We perform the osteotomy. We can always go back and do reset and, uh, and also to repeat uh, every step of, uh, of the procedure to remove the glenosphere, to remove the base plate, to, re to perform again the osteotomy and uh, to, uh, to repeat all, all the steps. So this is the position also from, uh, from, the, from the humeral stem. And afterwards, the software may put our implants in their position. So if we measured our ankles preoperatively, we see that the DSA ankle is it's not so bad. It's a 41 degrees. It's our, in our preferred range. But if we measure our LSA, we over lateralize this prosthesis. It's about 100 degrees. So probably that we don't, we won't have very good functional outcomes for the patient. So we can go back. We can remove again the humerus, remove the glenosphere, remove the, the, the glenosphere, remove the, the stem, and change a little bit the position of our base plate. Make a little bit more excessive medialization and also removing the, the diameter of uh, uh, of, uh, of the, the, the distance from our bio assay or from metal augment, probably a five millimeter would be better. So we medialize a little bit. We put again our, our implants, our humerus, we reposition our, uh, uh, our arthroplasty, and then we measure again. And right now, our lateralization shoulder angle seems to be a little bit better. It's about 90 degrees and not 100 degrees. We do not over-lateralize our prosthesis. 
So preoperatively, we have our final construct and we can play in, in the office to see how it's in a 3D manner. We can use this tool to see and to remove several levels and to see how it sits our implants. It changes your mind, it changes the way that you, you are thinking, and it's very good not only for the surgeon and also for, for your assistant during the operation to put the HoloLens before the operation and to understand than what, what we want to do. So also in intraoperatively, before the operation, we have, we have the, the position of the, of the base plate. We don't have any available metal posterior augment, but uh, we can understand uh, what, uh, how much bone do we have to use posteriorly to correct the deformity and the direction also of our of our base plate let's go into interoperatively this is the position of the first guide wire this is the posterior erosion posteriorly and this is the final uh, drill for for the base plate and we see the small the small pins we have posteriorly in order to incorporate the graft and uh, we see the posterior where here and the direction of uh, of our uh, of our glenosphere and this is the final position and the direction also and the hologram at the side so post operatively we had lsa for this patient 90 degrees and the dsa 40 degrees and it's approximately the same with the with what we have planned preoperatively so in the summary, we can, we have to, to correct every deformity, which is a very important factor. We can use bio RSA or metal with a 3D solder medicat, you can correct, check it, and make it a lot of times before the operation to see how, how, how it works, how, how much you, you lateralize or how much you distalize, and you can check both angles preoperatively. And I think by using this software and with the combination of the mixed reality, we can have reproducible results and uh, promising results in the future. Thank you for your attention. All right, and also thank you from my side, uh, Elias, um, for your really interesting um, overview of how um, the mixed reality and also the 3D shoulder planning actually um, helps you during surgery. So I will just quickly switch back to my screen right now that you should be able to see right now. So um, I think Dr. Bozzialis already gave you a really um, interesting and deep overview of how um, the 3D software, but also the mixed reality solution um, really advances his um, surgery. So I don't think I have to add too much to that, um, but I just want to give you a, another short overview of how this solution actually looks like here, of course, not in the OR, but in the office. But as you can see, um, with this mixed reality technology, you really have the possibility to originally size as you planned it. If you export it from our Medica 3D shoulder, you can place your um, pathology right in the room. Of course, you can resize it as well. Um, and just to get, as Dr. Bozziadis already said, um, a deeper overview, a deeper understanding of how um, the pathology is actually looking, of how um, the pathology looks like of how you plant your uh, implants uh, in a way that you just can't with just in a 2D displaying. And as you can see, of course, you also have the possibility to add other elements as well. They don't have necessarily to be um, 3D uh, objects, 3D um, holographs, but also, for example, like a planning report, as we see here, that's automatically exported from Indicat as well, or measurements you made, if you want to display them during surgery, that's also something that of course is possible. You can, as we already saw in the video as well, also segment the um, 
the object that's possible because in our 3D software, we were able to segment the uh, humerus away from the scapula. And therefore now we also have the possibility to um, de-segment um, this object here as well in order to get a deeper understanding of how we planned our surgery. And of course we can rebuild everything together as well. Um, we also have the possibility to change the transparency of the abject, um, especially in this case, quite interesting to, as Dr. Potziadis already mentioned, to get a deeper understanding of how your implants are actually placed within the bone. And of course, especially intraoperatively, that's really interesting or really good to know if you um, already put the implant the way you planned, or if you maybe have to change a little bit. And um, just to quickly wrap that up a little bit, um, we saw this feature as well before. Uh, you also have the possibility to completely hide several parts. Um, you have the possibility to choose pre-selected views, repeat that part. So um, as I think the most parts we already seen in your videos anyway, so that should just be an, another little additional um, overview of how the solution looks like. But um, as you can see, we are able to display our 3D object, resize it. And if I'm just going a little bit and fast forward here, we can also place different PDF reports as I already mentioned here, like the planning report. We can also export um, an additional planning information. We can segment the planning in order to play around a little bit with and get a deeper understanding of the pathology. And we can also, as you can see here, change the transparency. That's what I was mentioning before to get a better understanding of how the implants are placed. And if I'm going a little bit fast forward, forward here, we already seen this function, I think. So you can also always hide parts. That's basically how we are trying to um, get into the next step. So we already have pretty much really good um, pre-operatively planning softwares, but of course we want to go the next step intraoperatively and that's the way we want to do that. So that's basically already it uh, from my side for today. I would like to thank you all very much for your attention. Um, if you want to get a little bit of a further in, um, insight into either our 3D planning software for the shoulder, but of course also for our other modules, if that's something you're more interested in, or in our mixed reality solution, feel free to just uh, contact us, try to just write us a short mail to this email address. I will also um, type that into the chat as well so that you can contact us. Just also to 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 interrupt you a little bit. I think with yes. the software, everybody that has started with with prosthesis has to right now this all the softwares help them to understand the anatomy and to, uh, to understand the pathology and to understand how it's working. Uh, with this software, you can uh, the advantage is that you're using different implants. So if um, if you if you think that it doesn't fit this implant, you can change. Uh, if it doesn't, you can order something new from uh, from the distributor. That I don't have this feature, and I probably I would like it for this uh, for this operation. Uh, you can also do it and explain to your resident and to your, to the or to 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 the fellow and uh, give them also the opportunity to see it in the 3D manner that in uh, before some years it was really, really, really difficult to, to understand and to how we have to put uh, our uh, glenosphere and the direction and everything. We have right now technology, we have the virtual reality and the, the augmented reality and I think the, the augmented reality is really, really good for educational reasons, not only to augment your your the, the precision of uh, of uh, your uh, of your operation, but also for educational reasons. My my residents are very very happy, and every operation they understand more and more, and they help me more in the operation also. Yes, definitely. So I also think, um, despite the the just visualization part, 
especially in the teaching part, in the educational part, it's really going to, a lot of things are going to uh, come up uh, soon, I'm pretty sure. So I think um, with this technological possibilities, we all can really um, look into the future um, with really quite a lot of excitement um, to see what's what will come in the next few years. And everybody from the in from uh, the attendees have any questions, we're open to questions. If they want to ask something, uh, we're, we're really, really, really open to, to these questions. It's, it's a fantastic technology and uh, we're in the beginning, but uh, it's, it's really, really good. And the future is very, very promising. If you have any questions, type it right now. We're open to, to answer it. <clears throat> All right, so I saw we already have one um, hand rise. I will um, give you the speech, Mr. Valisiaros, and then you can ask us. Oh, I think you are still muted. Maybe you have to unmute yourself, or if that doesn't work, you can also just um, write your question to the chat. Ah, yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you now, yes. Okay, Dr. Bucciales, do you prefer uh, in BioRSA uh, bone block augments or metal augments? Uh, I think it's... Um... It's probably I don't know. If we, we know that with the bone uh, bone augments is working. We know from uh, from Pascal Boileau that is everything is healed. We have seen it that everything is healed. And uh, probably in the cases that we have humor head, it's it's better to use a bio SA. And if you don't have a very good humor head in a very very difficult conditions, probably uh, something metal will give you a more fast solution. But uh, well, probably a bone is it's better. It 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 healed every, in every in every case, and we don't have any resorption. It's not like the latter day. It's we have compressive forces and uh, everything is healed. So for me, it's it's bone. It's working. It's working very well. All right, thank you. So if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to just raise your hand or write to the chat. We will be here for a couple more minutes. Um, and if you want to ask um, a question afterwards, you can, of course, always also contact us um, within the mail. I was just writing you. And um, yeah, I think we will hear soon also to provide you with um, a new version for both the Medicat and also for the um, RN shoulder software. Okay. So we have, we have some attendees that they are, they are getting right now inside, new one. <laughs> ah, okay, so maybe the time zone was a little bit uh, confusing, but um, I think we also um, recorded this webinar. So um, okay. I have to talk with our marketing, but I'm sure um, we find a way to uh, provide all those who are attending right now with uh, the recording as well. So just if you follow us um, either on LinkedIn or just give us a short, um, write us a short mail to sales at medicat.eu, um, then uh, we can provide you with the webinar recording as well or answer your additional questions. Thank you, everybody.